Before we jump into the video today, I just want you all to know that I've created a brand new channel. It's an analog horror channel focused on Lovecraftian horror. So if you dig that sort of thing and you need a good scare, check it out. In the first video that I made for this channel, I talked about how Lunar Regolith was a total nightmare for astronauts that participated in the Apollo program. And it totally was. But ever since samples of lunar dust were returned to Earth thanks to that program, botanists have been clamoring to get their hands on those samples to see if seeds would germinate in them. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're going to be talking about the first plants ever grown in lunar soil. Lunar regolith, or lunar soil, is a serious pain in the butt to manage. Or at least it was back in the Apollo era. It's probably one of the biggest non-political reasons we've avoided going back. The stuff was formed by millions and millions of years of small impacts, creating grains that are incredibly small. One of the best ways to visualize lunar dust is to imagine extremely tiny fragments of glass. But those tiny grains of moon dust are also charged because the surface of the moon is bombarded with UV light and x-rays, which means they stick to everything. During the Apollo landings, astronauts reported the stuff getting into the lander, the computers, all over their suits and also in their lungs. In addition to the potential hazard of suit breaches due to how the dust would wear down protective gear, recent studies have revealed that lunar regolith is potentially also damaging to humans at the cellular level. But despite all that, botanists all over the world have been obsessed with the idea of attempting to grow plants in the stuff proving that the character of Mark Watney in The Martian is not an exaggeration. Botanists really are insane. And well, a team has finally succeeded in doing exactly that. But is this the beginning of a lunar farming agenda, or will the harsh properties of the stuff squash all hope of making crops viable for lunar colonists in the long run? These tiny stems are the result of a team's effort to get plants to grow in lunar soil. While this is a major breakthrough, plants in lunar soil, the team behind the experiment reported that plants grown in lunar samples were extremely slow growing and were far smaller than those grown in volcanic soil from good old terra firma. Basically, if we were to attempt to farm crops on the moon, it would happen at a snail's pace. Even the best gardener would find lunar soil to be a nearly unconquerable foe. To start, they're razor sharp, full of super tiny glass shards, and a large portion of it is composed of metallic iron. Basically, lunar soil hates organic life. In these images, we see a small helping of plants grown in lunar soil right next to the same species grown in volcanic soil. A total of 16 pots were filled with soil sampled during the Apollo 11, 12, 16, and 17 missions. As a control, 16 additional pots were filled with volcanic soil. All of the plants in the study had the same level of LED light available to them and were treated with nutrients administered via water. In this particular image, it's clear that the plants grown in lunar soil are pitiful compared to their volcanic cousins. But the amazing thing here is that all of the pots bore fruit, or um, plants, but some of them were worse off than others, and those featured a strange violent coloration, a telltale sign that the plant is stressed out. Apollo 11's return samples were the most difficult to grow in, and curiously, these particular samples were exposed on the lunar surface for the longest period of time. So there's no telling if lunar farming will even be viable in the future, given the results of this study. But the work's not done yet. The team did take a close look at the genes of their lunar garden. That examination told them what metabolic tools they were using to deal with the stress of growing in alien soil. And potentially, this could lead to genetic modifications that would produce a species of plants that could easily grow in regolith. Annalisa Paul, a plant molecular biologist and member of the three-person team that grew the plants, says that the findings of this study are going to be incredibly important in what comes next. That's all I've got for you today, but if you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and share this video with someone who loves the moon and plants. 
And be sure to check out my new Lovecraftian analog horror project. The second video is out now and you can watch it by clicking the link in the pinned comment. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.